those that martyred that were martyred and killed. Uh, look up in the middle of verse 35 of Hebrews 11. And others were tortured, not accepting their release so that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others experienced mockings and scourgings, yes, also chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were tempted, they were put to death with the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, men of whom the world was not worthy, wandering in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. People that gave it all. And verses 39 and following, And all these, having gained approval through their faith, did not receive what was promised, because God had provided something better for us, so that apart from us, they would not be made perfect. Chapter 12. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so, easy, so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Let's pray for just a moment. Heavenly Father, we pray over this text. We thank you for veterans and for those that fell, that we may be free. And we thank you that we have the freedom to be here today. Father, but we also have to look at our faith life. There are those that went before us in, in Christ that were killed, that the word and the truth might go on. And Father, may we be mindful of that and thankful of that. And may we pick up for that also. And God, I pray for Alex right now. And I pray that you calm him and that you still him and that you calm me and still me and, and, and give me divine guidance to do what I need to do most. In Jesus' name, amen. I kind of want to mirror what I just said about soldiers and Memorial Day. When we look at the saints of the past, their past faithfulness and what they've gained by it. In verse 39 it says, And these, having gained approval through their faith, those that have went before us and have done valiantly and they're recognized as men of faith and they stand saved before God. Do you ever picture the possibility of being a martyr one day? We really don't much in our country. But what it talks about these and others, as it said back up in verse 35, the ones that were tortured, the ones that were sawn in two, those that were stoned and burned and everything else, they were counted faithful. They won great victories and not denying their Lord. They made great witnesses. Sometimes it said the, the, the church is watered by the blood of the saints, those that give it all. And we praise God for them when we look at them and we acknowledge them. All those in the Bible, and we think of the apostles. You know, Judas hung himself and John died of old age. Church history tells us the other ten, they all died a violent death because they would not renounce Jesus and they would not stop preaching the good news. Stephen was stoned. Paul tells us was killed at Rome. Church history does. They died. We look at the reformers, you know, in church history. Huss was burned at the stake. Tyndale was strangled as he was at the stake, and then they lit him up and burned him. They were willing to give it all that we might have the word pure and unadulterated. We may celebrate the truth of Jesus Christ, salvation by grace through faith, not through works, not through a church, not through ritual, but through Jesus. People died and won great victories that we could be here today and have truth. If you've never seen a copy of the Book of Martyrs, it's a thick book. It starts, I think, with Stephen. It starts with the apostles. And it's story after story after story of people who gave it all, who would not renounce Christ. One of my favorites is Polycarp. I think he was 86, 87 years old. And they were going to burn him. And they basically said, you're an old man. Just renounce Christ so you don't have to die violently. They said, no. He said, 80 and 6 years, he has not denied me. Shall I now deny him? He 
who threatened to bring out wild beasts, he said, call for them. He said, we'll bring on the fire. He said, you know of the fire that burns for a moment, but you know nothing of the fire that burns for eternity. Do as you wish. And they burned him. But his witness speaks to us today that Jesus Christ is worth dying for. It's what life is about. A memorial, a statement, an Ebenezer, a stone of help that God is there. A monument to tell us what's important. You know, Jim Elliott and Nate Saint and the three other guys that died in Ecuador at the hands of the Alca Indians, known as maybe the most violent people on earth. They had a, I think it was 70% homicide rate. They all just killed each other all the time. They prayed and sought them out and, and searched for these men that they may tell them about Jesus. And when they went to them, they refused to take guns because they said, we are ready to die, and they're not. And those five men died with spears in their bodies at the hands of those men. But their widows went to the tribe and told them about Jesus. And through their blood, that tribe is, is largely Christian today. The most violent people there were were brought to Jesus because there were five men willing and desiring to give it all for the sake of Jesus. We have a great cloud of witnesses, the saints. And it's right for us to remember and honor God's work in their lives. I, you know, I bless God for you is the thing we can say. I bless God for those men. The testimony, the witness they have, the passion they had, it's humbling. And it's inspiring. It's good to remember. It's good to honor those that God has raised up. But yet we also have to say that their work is not done. Even though Paul and Stephen, the apostles, the reformers, the the, the missionaries that were killed, they completed their race, but the work is not done. You know, if we look back at our text, verse 39, it says, all these having gained approval through faith, they showed the way. They were successful, they were faithful, they entered into glory, but it's not done. When it speaks of the Old Testament, they did not receive what was promised. You know, the Old Testament martyrs, you know, they were still looking forward to the cross. But that's not what I want to say. Their work is incomplete. It's not about that. In verse 40 of Hebrews 11 says, Apart from us, they would not be made perfect. Apart from us, there's a work that's yet to be done. Even though they've completed their part of the race, their work is not done. 